I was watching my intro and realized, wait a minute, these pictures I had, which I had made five, ten years ago for my channel when I really first started it, uh, I just hadn't been active. I thought, wait a minute, why am I using pictures when I have drone footage of that same thing now? <laughs> so I hope you enjoy the new intro. And if you look on the Sierra Rocks at the very top, there are actually people standing up there. Check out my drone video and you'll see it in a lot more detail. But I had no idea they were up there until I flew my drone up there. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining and coming back and, and putting up with my sheer boredom. Uh, I <laughs> hope it's not too boring, but uh, welcome back. I appreciate it. It is a nice, cold 15 degrees this morning. Total, all in all, we probably got about 8 inches between the two storms. I had to go out and uh, sweep off my uh, solar panels. They had a bit of snow on them. And I got the fireplace roaring. Plenty warm down here. <laughs> and this thing's pretty cool because it heats the whole house. It ends up going upstairs and heats the whole basement. It gets kind of warm down here, but that's good because all that heat rises upstairs. I'm going to be working on this inverter, but got me a nice fire. Got me nice and warm. I'm going to be going through the settings and checking things out on this. And, and actually, uh, I've spent the last week or so... Uh, messing with it and this video is going to be about that All right, let's let's shut off this battery. I got my fire extinguisher ready I've got 911 posed on my phone. So all I gotta do is push one button and uh, We can turn off this battery. I think I can run really fast It's gonna be awful cold outside if I have to do that, but oh well all for the sake of my inverter. It'll work. Yeah, sure it will. Well, I'm very proud of myself for not electrocuting myself, frying my inverter, or blowing up my batteries. I did good. <laughs> of course, just give me some more time and I'll get there. <laughs> All right. After having tested this for a couple weeks now, and by no means am I done testing, I've come to my conclusions as of today. Now, keep in mind, I'm trying to set this inverter up with some DIY lithium phosphate batteries that I made myself. So this is a little bit different setup. This inverter was definitely designed for the EG4 server rack batteries. Uh, they have communications to them, can set up to them and everything. Hopefully they will upgrade a software update so they can work with other lithium phosphate batteries uh, outside of their own or that group of batteries, server rack batteries. So my results are just for my, my batteries. And with that regards, lack of communication between the battery and the inverter causes you to spend a lot more time figuring out the proper settings for this thing. It can be done by voltage alone under the lead acid setting. Don't like the fact that I know these are designed for server rack batteries, which are the same type of battery. So it has the capability of doing absorption, floating better, that isn't offered on the lead acid batteries. So I've been spending a lot of time adjusting this thing to try to make it work better and get the most out of my battery. That's something I'm a little disappointed in. The inverter works well when it changes over to AC. Uh, anytime my battery cut out on me, it immediately changed over and it never dropped my computer, never dropped the clocks, never dropped the refrigerators. It was so instant, it was very smooth and all the circuits didn't notice the difference. That's a good thing about the inverter. But you have to be connected to the AC in order for it to do that. And you can see that you're connected here on the screen, computer screen. It will show the 247, 46 volts accessible from the grid. Now my battery is out of balance. But really, if you take a look at the curve of a lithium 
phosphate battery, you will see that it peaks at the very bottom and at the very top. Otherwise, it's a pretty flat line around 3.2 all the way through its charge and discharge. With that in mind, my batteries were out of balance when they started dipping because one set was a lot lower than the other. The BMS did a good job in recognizing the lowest cell and shutting the whole battery off. I don't want the BMS being the trigger for the inverter all the time. And I haven't quite found the right voltage. So because it doesn't communicate, it takes a lot more of your time to find out where these numbers are at. I still haven't found those numbers, so I'm not going to let you know where I'm at at this point. It's irrelevant because my batteries are out of balance. I have finally finished balancing this second set of batteries and we'll be installing it very shortly and then my readings should be a lot more accurate and I won't have to be fiddling so much with the voltage. Hopefully we'll find out. One of the other problems uh, I found out is this inverter is really a lot less efficient than my Victron Energy MPPT, which I guess I can is expected. But the inverter says everyone's caught up in the only 50 watts when it's idling. But the truth of the matter is I'm using my inverter all the time. So when it's revved up, it's pulling about 100 watts. And I've noticed that the draw is a whole lot more. I can't run as much stuff on this because of that. Uh, it is sucking my battery down a lot quicker than my other setup. So it's less efficient. It's pulling about 80 to 100 watts all the time. Now, there's no 50 watt. I guess if you're idling it and it's not doing anything, it'll be below 50 watts. But what's the purpose of the inverter if you're just idling it all the time? I plan on using mine all the time. So it's real draw is between 80 and 120 watts, depending on how much the fans are revved up. So don't count on that 50 watts unless you're just sitting it and it's not doing anything. It draws some energy. I was a little disappointed in that, but then again, when I thought about it more seriously, I thought, okay, I just wasn't thinking wisely about that. So don't be uh, caught up in that. You can also see here on the import here, you can see it's 64. The battery discharge, the consumption is 130 over here, but I've drawn 115 and 64, meaning I've had 170, 180 kilowatts to get 130. Uh, now, it's been a cloudy month for that matter. Matter of fact, probably only had about five, six sunny days all month. So that probably has a big part of it too. You can see here that even today, this morning, in the middle of the night when I was asleep, it kicked itself on. So I've got it kicking on, and it did this while I was sleeping, and it charged the batteries up because they got low again. Because we just don't have any sun this month. Here you can see I had a few good days of solar here, but I've been charging it an awful lot. It's nice that this is the only place you can see where you're importing, importing power on the red lines so that's kind of neat in my solar days that's the solar days it's been a pretty crappy month <laughs> and the consumption fairly steady uh, you can tell where i have the weekends and i got my working on my office a lot more but uh and the charges times i had that the ac had to kick on quite a few times I do have to admit, I really love having all this information. I never had it in my last setup. Now I can see what's going on here. And it's pretty cool. If you're doing importing, it always starts on the feed-in energy. You have to click it here to see what your import is. But right now it's pretty cloudy and I'm barely getting anything out of my solar. So I'm going to... Replace the battery with the new uh, balanced, well-balanced battery and start doing some more testing with it while taking the other one offline and getting it nicely balanced again. And then I'll put it in. I'm also looking at 
adding my new solar array and was wondering what y'all thought. I can either run it in a straight line, <laughs> it looks like this, <laughs> which is kind of long, or I can double stack them like this and uh, I'm kind of leaning towards that, but it's going to require more work. If I get lazy, I'll make it one straight string because, well, that's a little easier. Uh, but I'll probably end up trying to make it look a little better and stack them. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot, y'all. More to come on this. I'm sorry this took so long, but I've really, between working 60, 80 hours a week and just having some time on the weekend to work with this, it's been a little difficult to try to tweak this as well. I'll let y'all know on how the new battery goes on my next video and kind of where my final settings are and uh, my final conclusions. Anyway, thanks a lot, y'all. Take care and have a good one.